Well, with all this COVID-19 coronavirus stuff that's going on, I, well, frankly have a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> so, uh, I think I briefly touched on this on one of the, the um, video potpourris of a uh, garage sale scores I did, you know, a few years back, maybe early 2018, something like that. Well, uh, I just briefly touched on it, um, but at this one garage sale where I got the um, Magnavox uh, cassette, re cassette recorder radio there that I did a quick little repair video on, which I still got, still works, um, was other cassette stuff, but I don't think I got too much detail into it, so, I mean, I haven't used any of it, I'm just holding on to it, because, well, anymore, I guess this stuff is getting more and more rarer and rarer, the can't talk, getting harder to find steel sealed. So, but first off, we will go in the box. So I'll put them in a, I put them all in one box here. Is these cassette cleaning, or head cleaners. We've got a Peaches cassette head cleaner. Made in Haiti. Let's see here, it says 1977 Peaches records and tapes. I thought Peaches sounded familiar. Hmm. Instructions in circus set for one pass every 40 hours of playing time. Yeah, nothing written on the back here. Yeah. I thought that Peaches and the way it was, the font and everything looked kind of familiar. Yeah, okay. Um... Got another cleaning cassette in here. This is like somebody's cleaning bag. Care bag. Here we got, it's an unlabeled cleaning tape. Although it's more of a mechanism that just, that's been pretty well used. I mean, damn camera won't focus, but see right there pretty well dirty Let's see if I can get just automatically focus nope it's not gonna do it but fairly well used it's just the type that like this will sweep side to side that middle part due to the mechanism and then these are just like there they just go around the pin troller and a couple of bottles of the cleaner which are by now and for the most part dried up there's some still left in there but even brand new unsealed bottles of these after a while, you, you can get it. They're still sealed. It's empty because it's just evaporated over time. Which is not a problem. I mean... Like, this in here... Isn't even a wet type. This is a dry type. There's no place to put any... Drops in or anything. And the same on... This one. It's just a dry type of cleaners. So. And I know I ramble and just bad camera work, bad speaking, but you know what? That's how I am. And then here is a package for the XL2 Max L's that came from Sound Warehouse. The tapes aren't in it. But there are a bunch of cassette labels in here. A whole bunch of different kinds. Uh, 
I will dump it out because I know some people would be like, well, let's see it. Here are... Wow, these look like... These are home printed... J cards. So that dates these two, well, at least for the average person. You know, early 2000s, probably. And then we've got some of these actual labels. It's in Japanese. Uh, it says how how to use the label. God dang camera. I think you can see that. This is Maxell on that one. Another Maxell 25 max points. I could do some research. They probably, you know, had a program you know turn in you know you can get free tapes or whatever probably uh, and we got some more Maxell labels these are all Maxells yeah everyone is a Maxell so yeah we got those Set that down to the side here. Oh, let's reach in this box here. What else do we got? All right. I got a couple of these. The TDK D30s, which are 15 minutes each side. Still sealed. You know what I'll probably do for y'all is after I finish recording the video, I'll actually take snapshots, actual pictures, and tack them on at the end of the video. That way, if you'd like, you can pause it on each picture and read these. Is the quality off? this camera while it's recording video is going to blur and it just is not going to, you're not going to be able to read that. So, but yeah, I've got, oh, two of these right there. So, yeah, this haul is pretty much a really good steel sealed cassette haul. And then, oh, <clears throat> we've got Maxell XL2 90 minute cassette. It's 45 minutes each side. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine nine of those oh and basically for this whole box I think I paid three bucks for it, if I remember correctly is that Rosso was a very generous one I paid for the cassette the box of the tape stuff and I paid for the cassette recorder was about two bucks I think so I paid a total of five bucks and then I got a few free stuff like some wires and stuff like that they just gave it to me for free so and then there we've got ah, what the heck something 
has leaked in there. It smells like vape juice. Which could very well happen in this house. Because, you know, I'm a vapor. It was probably an old vape that was near this box and probably leaked in it. No big deal. They're still sealed, so it doesn't hurt them. But we got the XL 60-minute tapes, which are 30 minutes each side, which everybody who knows anything about cassettes knows. Well, that, duh. So I got one, two, three. Of course, Facebook would have to be like, hey, you got a notification. Four, five, six of them. So, Ugh. and now, a little oddball here, We've got a Maxell XL2 46 minute tape, cassette tape, 23 minutes each side. Of course, all of them say this, ideal for CD. What the heck? This is mainly made, I mean, how common sense to tell you, this is made to record your average album that was released in the 70s and 80s. Because back then they were thinking of um, Oh, shoot. I forgot the phrase, but Where, you know, primarily when the album was released, they had the LP in mind. Album sequencing. There you go. You know, and usually most albums were around 22 minutes aside. So, you know, you could dub your album onto here each side and not have very much blank space at the end. Or, you know, your CD. It's ideal for CD. But, <laughs> you know, if you knew your how to split it, you know, you do half the CD on one side and the other half on the other, blah, blah. But, yeah, this was just meant for, like, actual album recording, I guess. I think it's pretty neat. 23 minutes on each side. And I have got three of those. One of them is open. So we will. Let's see. There we are. Pretty cool. And yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to get some pictures of that too. So, there's three of those. And then in the rest of the box are just some others. Here's a another Maxell 46 minute tape. It's blank. Still open, no J card stuff or anything like that. UDS2. And then you got a Sony Hi Fi 60. Which I've used these before. Built in um, strips so you can write what's on there. These Sony's weren't very weren't bad, to be honest. Got another Maxell XL two forty six. Says Kelly Hunt on it. I have no idea. I haven't really played this or anything. The album. Uh, 
Here's a XL246, another one, different type with Kathy Matea on it. I knew who Kathy Matea is. Big, big house, it says, another 46. Something was written on it. I will just make sure to take some snapshots and throw them all together. Another TDK T9 D90s. I used a lot of those TDKs back in the early 2000s. Had a lot of them. Sony HF90. Here we've got Burger King presents West Heat. One of those little promotional albums. Classical Treasures. Randy Travis, Storms of Life on the Warner Brothers. No J card on it. Mark Chestnut. Too Cold at Home on MCA. This was before. Yeah, this is 1990. I think that says. So this was before the label change where I guess Universal pretty much took over and also MCA changed their logo which they did in 92. Uh, Dan Seals Ray John. Let's see this Capital. I know that because I see the XDR. Yep, Capital. <laughs> the XDR. What does that stand for? Extended Dynamic Range? I don't know what it was. Another Dan Seals. The Beast? Or the Best. The Best, sorry. I'm having trouble. It's a low light situation for me, visually. The camera makes up for it. Doug Stone. Self-titled on Epic. And these are just stuff. These are... I'm not interested. These just happen to come in the box of with the blank tapes Paul Overstreet So in Love RCA the old the light, what I, I say the lightning bolt but this is also showing Victor label so this is supposed to be RCA Victor supposedly as you know there's the Um, his master's voice, the uh, nipper. Which RCA just kind of took over that symbol. And then Clint Black, Killing Time, also on RCA Victor. I'm assuming that's Victor still. I mean, it could be just RCA, and this was that time they just used that, even, and they were separate from Victor. After their split. Pretty much after the demise of RCA in general. Because of Select Division. Which pretty much killed them. <laughs> Basically all that was left is pretty much the label. Record label. <laughs> so. Alright. Nope. I'm going to end here. Up next is the pictures.